It is not Mono, it is Reinhardt Dean of Pandemonium fame. Hello everyone. Glad and, to be here. And we're glad to have you, and glad that you are not in charge of spelling anything. So, <laughs> we are still waiting on the captains to get going here. We're missing two people from West Coast Riders, but I got a message just a moment ago from the captains that they are almost ready, so I figured I'd get the stream going now. And just to give a little commentary here, you know, Reinhardt, we were talking about this before the cast started, but it seems a lot like Quarantine is becoming sort of an equalizer map between the newer teams and the older teams. Why do you think that is? Um, I just think it's because a lot of these, a lot of the more established teams rely on map knowledge, and a lot of the skill level is pretty equal across these teams. So having the not map knowledge of the more experienced teams is helping them overall, but teams like Operation 1, West Coast Riders, V3, they're all practicing like crazy, so they know this map very well. So they're able to use that. It's true. Yeah, they are just practicing in ways that a lot of veteran teams are not. It's kind of surprising. I mean, a lot of these high-level teams are not playing right now, or they have just started playing because of the tournament. And I think we will see the effects of that shortly. Uh, you know, we're seeing teams that are fairly experienced going down to the newer teams who have taken the time to practice on this. It seems like some teams are kind of holding out hope that we're going to go back to 1.7. And I, I don't know about you, man, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think I we think are... Sorry, go ahead. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there are some teams that have picked up quest players that are already established. And I just think at this point they can't go back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so you've got te people on your team that are on hardware that can't run 1.7. And also, I, I mean, have you tried to run 1.7 at all? Um, no, I have not, but I heard it's people are getting dropped left and right, so seems like right now 1.8 is the better build. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. I have not personally tried to run 1.7, but everybody I know who has has said that there are serious connectivity issues. So, yes, you get the visual fidelity that we were all fond of back in the day, but at the cost of a game that is far less playable than 1.8, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. And this is, you know, let's just say it. I mean, this is the future of the game. Like, they had to go to Quest. There's no way around it. And they had to rebuild a lot of the code base, too, because it was kind of copy-pasted together. It just wasn't sustainable. So I think a lot of these older teams are kind of upset about that. They were used to the old game as broken as it might have been. And they just don't want to accept that this is the way things are going to be from this point forward. Which, in my opinion, is not a very healthy attitude to have if you're going to maintain your position at the top of a competitive hierarchy. Uh, I definitely agree with that. I know, like, these new teams are beating us a lot of times, and it's been a real wake-up call. So... I imagine these upper-level teams will also have that soon. Yep. Yeah, it's going to happen. We're going to see a lot of upsets, I think, in this tourney, more than anything, and maybe even during the season. All right, so I just got a message from one of the captains in West Coast Riders. He's saying they're just having a little bit of trouble getting their last player in. So I'm going to ask him if they're going to do 4v5 if that can't happen. Oh, they're starting. They oh, are starting. starting. Or I could even ask. Oh, someone just dropped from West Coast Riders. Oh, yeah. Don't look at numbers get killed. Well, you know, it's a good exercise. It's a scrim. So this is something uh, we practice occasionally is just running a three-person defense. Oh, and one of them, one of the people in Operation 1, I think they reset or something because they're dead so oh west coast riders have the crater spawn in the northeast it looks like they're doing a three-man north push so all of them which makes sense to some degree when you are this far down in terms of personnel uh, you, uh I've, sorry go ahead i've also noticed since the update you can do much stronger north pushes than in the past 
there are some counters to that though like if you can get on top of the crash building and look down from there it's a risky spot in some sense because you can skyline yourself but I have seen some devastating kills from there I mean people taking out two or three people at a time from that spot because you just have such great visibility but yeah to your point if you don't have something like that, the north is now a very dangerous place for any Volk defenders who want to hang out because there are way more options for Marsoc now. Yes, I also noticed the uh, orange barrels on the scaffolding also provide good cover of the north, but you're very exposed trying to get out of there. The other thing about that too is you can shoot through the red. So if somebody gets an angle on you, it's possible that you cannot see them, but they can shoot you and uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sketch about those barrels. I've yet to see anybody use them effectively, although I'm open to being wrong there. If you know, somebody knows how to really take advantage of that spot, I'd love to see it. And it looks like we're about to get everybody on the west here and perhaps encountering Burtok. He's not looking the right way, but he is in the crash building, which is closest to all of these Marsoc players here. I've noticed Op1 has opted for a different defensive strategy. They have three people near Uplink and then one with Crash Building. There's no one covering the south right now or the far northwest uh, pass, so they could be open to getting flanked here. Yeah, a little too conservative in my opinion. Uh, you don't have to go too far from the objective, but especially having Hospital covered in the south would be a wise decision when you don't know where they're spawning. Just because if they can lock that building down, they are very close to objective and they've got verticality on you. So one shot kills, looks like he's branching off a little bit directly into the crash building. Stony and Dabalina hanging out further in the west. I don't know, it doesn't look like Burtok has caught on to what's happening yet. So I imagine one shot and Burtok should run into each other pretty soon. Yes, I think you are right about that. Yeah, maybe, I think Burtok might have heard something because he seems to be creeping and lifting his weapon up. It looks like he's he expecting it. Stony. Yeah. I don't know if he's aware that one shot kills is right below him though. And shots go out, Stony gets 40 printing. 40 out in a bit of an exposed position there. It looks like Ram Ramen is rotating. Oh, Burtok gets Stony. One shot, I don't know if he heard him. Now, I'm not sure if he knew what happened there. I know the sound can be kind of funky right now. He might not have heard the shots. He does look like he's moving up though, so maybe he did. Maybe he's trying to creep on him here. Get a little bit of a wide angle here so I can cover both sides. And one shot gets Burtok. We're now down to a 2v2. Dabalina pushes up in the west. Ramen and Skype staying right on objective. So the right thing to do here. They should know where the attack is coming from. Skype watching the south, but... He could potentially come around this corner and get an angle on both Dabalina and One Shot. One Shot should have an angle on Ramen soon. Ooh, I think One Shot saw that, but he could not refrag in time. Oh. Hey. And that was a good effort. I mean, they started out with three players and still got it right onto the objective. So, not a bad push. I think the, yeah, uh, if they could have put some more people up on roof, they probably could have taken that. Yeah, or, you know, maybe even sent people to the south, you know, three in the north and two in the south, maybe a little bit of an encirclement. That could have turned the tide pretty significantly as well. Uh, it looks like they now have Mastastunta in for West Coast Riders, so it should be at least a 4v5 this time. Traditionally, there is also an advantage to Volk, so it will be interesting to see how they choose to defend this, though. Yeah, that's a good point. If you're going to be down a person, it's best to be down on defense. The fact that they were down first round to three people on Marsoc is pretty rough. 
that is a hard situation, especially on a large map. I was also kind of surprised to see that Operation 1 did not play center burning, but I think that may just be how it used to be set up. Center burning was very strong. However, the new update, it's not as critical. It's a good spot, but it's still very exposed. So I understand why a lot of teams are not playing it. Um, you know, if you stick just looking to one side where you're not exposed to the north in particular, it can be okay, but... Yeah, to your point, I mean, it's just not nearly as powerful as it used to be. In the old version of Onward, center burning was a powerhouse of a position, but nowadays not so much. So Operation 1 at the same spawn. It looks like they're doing a 1-3-1 one, one push with Burtok going into the south. Uh, Skype 4D and Ramen staying north but closer to the road, and one of them going, f and Ranger going far north. saw Ranger yesterday using the sniper rifle. Great effect, so I'll be curious to see if he can pick anybody off today. Got the four times on that. So Burtok did make it all the way into the south. And it looks like Skype is stopping on the mall, or in the north road. And Dabalina and Ranger may very well see each other here. Ranger should have an angle on Dabalina. Ooh, just missed the timing there. Dabalina peeked his head above that piece of fuselage and just barely went below when Ranger was looking that direction. So still... Oh, sorry, go ahead. On me, Burtok's about to run into one, sh er, one shot. Oh yeah, here we go in the south from the hospital. Yeah, I got that. Uh, yeah, one shot in a devastatingly effective position right here. Wow, what a shot. I cannot believe I just saw that. That was really nice shot by Burtok there. Rangers shooting onto Dabooine and they're exchanging fire right now. And Raman actually took him out from the side. That was nice coordination. I hear them communicating. Well, it is all up to Stony now in the crash building. It looks like he's been identified. Yep, lots of lasers trained on Stony right now. This would be a prime cap opportunity, in my opinion. Because you could send Skype here from the south all the way around, and Stony would not see him and just keep him Bird engaged. Burtok is also in the south. So he could flank around, but it looks like he's rotating back the other way, actually. I and imagine they don't have a kill count right now. I was just going to say, I don't think they have got an accurate kill count, because if they did, they'd be pushing a lot harder. If they know there's only one person left, and that one person is who they were shooting at. And Stony rushing back to objective now. Yeah, this is kind of the downside of not having an accurate kill count, is you have to play more conservatively because you just don't know if there are more defenders waiting in the wings. Stony Skype right now moving up to center burning, so that he could run into Stony pretty soon. Uh, looks like he was spotted. Stony gets ramen. He is surrounded. He's got Skype, 40 printing, Burtok right in front of him, and he has Ranger on the roof. This is going to be the defense of the sentry if he can pull it off. Skype is... His character looks like he's having a seizure on his way over to the objective, but... He is... He is making this happen. He is getting close. Oh, I, Stony's about to get spotted, and that should be it. Yep. So, Operation 1, go up 2 nothing. Let's see, we still have a 4v5 here for West Coast Riders. I'm assuming they just have one that's fully MIA. 
I liked what Stoney was doing there, though, running around. So you're either going to get shot doing that, or you're going to catch the bulk, or sorry, the Marsock off guard. So you can get some picks and maybe save the round that way. Yeah, I mean, he did the right thing. He was the last person up, and he was going back and forth just trying to get somebody. And at the end of the day, it's better to die. Because everybody was getting close to that objective. You do not want to play too defensively in that situation. Um, you know, you get to the point where it's one person left. You've already made enough mistakes that you're probably not going to save it at that point. So best to just try to take one or two with you, which Stoney did, to be fair. He took somebody out before he died. So this uplink is the hospital one. Um, you can cap from both rooms inside, so this one is tricky to defend. Okay, so for anybody watching right now, I just talked to One Shot Kills over Discord, and if we can get a reservist in, send me a message on Discord. I can send you the code and get you into the game because they need somebody right now. Soldier Z, I see that you said I'll sub in if needed. You can send me a message. Anybody else who's interested, whoever sends me a message first will get it. Looks like they're loading into the start of the next round. West Coast Riders spawned in behind tail, or point wing, or point tail. Oh, this is actually my favorite spawn for this objective. I like the quick spawns. A uh, little surprised that they're going away from it like this. It's a viable strategy, you just don't see it that often. Master Stunta and Ranger pushing in. So it looks like the Sony and One Shot are taking the roof. Um, Skype just took out One Shot. Okay. Yeah, everybody looking towards the north here from hospital. Okay, so I have a reservist now from Velociraptors coming in. I had several messages, apologies to everybody else. He was just the first one to send it to me. So you should be seeing Soldier Z coming in shortly for West Coast Riders. And Masta Stunta pushing in from gas station here. Stony takes out Ramen. Was I'm assuming that was in the north. I'm in the south right now. Yes, it was in the north. Um, Stony's throwing smoke into tank courtyard, and Stony just got taken out by Burtok. Oof. Yeah, Burtok just dangerous with that sniper rifle. I've noticed a lot of these new quest players are picking up the sniper rifle very quickly. You know, I'm a little hesitant about endorsing that. I mean, some of these guys are showing real promise with it, but a lot of people are picking it up, I think, for the cool factor. You know, they want to play with the super sweet sniper rifle, and you, know, you really should only be picking up the sniper rifle once you have a solid understanding of supporting your teammates and good map knowledge so that you can give quality callouts. And, you know, I've seen some rookie teams that's, that understand that. Like, I would argue Operation 1 is one of those teams. But I've also seen teams where it's clear they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, Lord Dabalina gets taken out at Tank Courtyard. Not completely out, but 4D has downed him in a position where very unlikely... Oh, and that's the end of it. That would have been an, basically an impossible res anyway. So Master Stunta all by himself in the gas station. 
Oh, he almost gets Burtok there. He managed to pick off Burtok. However, they do know where he is right now. Hecklock endorsing, or Hecklock endorsing the sniper rifle right now in the comments. Let me see this travesty. Oh my god. Hecklack, get out. <laughs> I guess it's better than the P90, so I'll take that. That is an excellent point. Pretty much anything is better than the P90. <laughs> Master Stunta has a minute left. 2v1, this is not impossible here. He just needs to be careful, although he is running a little low on time. He picks up, speaking I of sniper rifles... Out of ammo. Yeah, he just picked up an SKS, so I'm assuming that is the case. I hope he picked up some mags, too. It's not look like he did. Yeah, I don't think he did either. Well, he's got 40 seconds to make his way across. This is going to be real close. Best case scenario here is that he kills the last two defenders. I don't think he'll have time for a cap. Even if he sprinted straight to the objective, it would be really close. And just for everybody that's unaware, the clock is two minutes fast. So Ooh, he... 4D almost team killed there. Oof, yeah, that would have been crucial team kill. Oh, 4D almost got saw <clears throat> seen there, too. Oh, uh, Master Stunta electing to go away from the hospital. And this is probably going to seal up, uh, West Coast Riders' fate here. Yeah, even if he had gotten that kill, it would have been too little time. Yep, and it's just a challenge to get that right. Timing is something that takes a long time to get down, so know that feeling. Even high-level teams still run out of time on that map. Or, excuse me, on this map. So, Especially now that the timer is reduced to five minutes. Yeah, it's just so brutal to have five minutes to traverse big maps like this or downfall. Gnarly. So you were watching more of the north push. I was watching primarily south. I mean, what were your thoughts about what they were doing on offense over there? I just think right now how the hospital the hospital is a better position than the north roof. And when they got up there, I think they that caused them to get picked off. However, I, some of them were rotating around, and I think that's the better way to play it. Just try to go for the far northeast push instead. Yeah, I haven't seen a ton of that lately, but I think you're right about that. Yeah, and uh, Hecklack just Hecklack was asking if you can cap around the corner for this. I believe you can. And I also, I do know for a fact that you can cap, I'm just going to swing the camera in here. Uh, you can cap from right about here, which is a pretty devastating cap position. You can cap inside the hospital, so if there's somebody outside, they have quite a run to get to you. Which is why you cannot let people get into the hospital if you're the last offender. So, Operation 1 spawned in the far north. So now we have Soldier Z from Velociraptors subbing in for the West Coast Riders 5th. So now we have a complete roster on both sides. And shots, shots come out from 40 printing there. Looks like Skype also saw Lord Dabalin. Dabalina move into his position. Yeah, it's a real information exchange in this situation. I mean, obviously, you don't the defenders don't want to be picked off, but it's not as critical for them to be spotted. And they, it's really offense that needs to worry about getting their spawn picked up on. And those are some very early shots. I'd be curious to see how defense reacts to this. Massa Santa is in the garage behind hospital. I haven't seen this play, but I do like the positioning. You have all these windows that cover similar angles, but would be hard to pick out from the other end. Well, we're about to get a test of its effectiveness because it looks like Burtok is running around in the south. Uh, 
I'll see if he gets picked up on before he reaches that point, but Mastastunta would be in a good position to stop him. The only downside of this setup here is that Dabalina's back is not really covered. So if Bertok comes around this corner, he would have a clean shot on Dabalina. And nobody, well, I guess One Shot Kills has the angle through the window. But Bertok, I believe this was the same exchange we saw before. Massastunta and Bertok exchanging rounds now. Nobody goes down. One thing I did just see, which I run into this issue fairly commonly, is Lord Dabwina was looking through his sights and not accounting for his the sights being a few inches above his barrel and was shooting the barricade in front of him. Oof, yeah, you really have to be careful about that. It's even if your dot is on the enemy, you need to make sure that your barrel is clear because you'll either not shoot or you will hit the obstacle in front of you. It looks like we just had a kill as well. 4D downs Lord Davalina, pulls his pistol out. Oh, and here is the... Oh boy, there's a cap coming out. 4D printing. Everybody is inside the hospital. And Davalina was trying to say... He is capping right now, but... Oh, I guess the commotion stops the cap. 40, no, 40 pulls... Pulls his tablet out one more time. And the cap comes out. Yeah, that, I think that was just a bit of lack of tablet awareness there. Nobody realizing that the outside defenders were not on objective anymore. And they pay the price for that. Wow. So, 5 nothing. Operation 1 on the first map. Um, Hecklack is asking who I am. I'm Reinhard Dean Hecklack. You know, the guy that we're always making fun of for being illiterate. That guy. Right, and now we are at the most casted rookie map of all time at this point, Suburbia. I know Mono would just love to be here right now. <laughs> I actually love being here. This is one of my favorite maps. My team is normally very good at it. And we also have the center house objective, which is a very capable objective depending on your spawn on, on Marsoc because you can get there before Volk sometimes. Sometimes, certainly. Uh, I have to say, I liked it a lot less in 1.7 because of the hedges. You could see through them and shoot through them, and that advantage is no longer there, fortunately. Uh, yeah. I think Suburbia is starting to grow on me a little bit, and for whatever reason, I tend to do well on Suburbia, even though it's not my favorite map. And oddly enough, Mono does really well on Suburbia, too, on the rare occasion we played in a league match, so... It's kind of odd that he hates it so much. I think that's the map creator in him wanting a more complex map. Yes, definitely. Um, it looks like Ramen and 4D are rushing center house, so it's going to be interesting if they can get there first. And they slowed up, so they will not. It looks like two of them are going upstairs, one staying downstairs in center house. It looked like initially 40 and Ramen were going to continue with that push, but they slowed down right as they got to the backyard section of the middle house. They're watching that doorway. Stoney running around the lower story. Rangers looking into the second story window right now, trying to get a pick. Yeah, and they're, they are doing the right thing and not poking anybody up through that window. It's just so easy to die there. Ranger just tried to toss a grenade in through the window, but it just barely missed. Ooh, and Skype gets Lord Dabalina around Burning House on lane four. Oh, doing the right thing here, clearing the outside lanes first. Making sure they're not... is entering the house right now. Sorry. Oh, all good. Nice. And Stony gets 40 printing. 
Oh, but he did not finish his kill, and there is still a very resable Marsog player, and the res comes out. Nice play. Nice refrag on that. And there is a lot going on in Middle House all of a sudden. Ooh, I think... Did somebody get shot through the wall right there? I think they got grenaded from downstairs somehow. Huh. So oh, it's all up to Master Stunta now. He could go for a res on Soldier, but... I don't know if he's going to risk that. Just checked his tablet. It would be relatively safe as long as he stays low. He stands straight up, though, and that is what happens. So, just a learning moment there for you guys. If you're going to get a res or move around in the middle house in that sort of situation, just stay very low. Go prone if you can, or crouch. I know right now proning is a little dangerous because you can shoot through the floor, but... Uh, you know, crouch, stay out of the window as much as you can, because he went for that res standing straight up, and you're just very easy to see through those windows. In the comments, Heck Heckwack asked how you defend against someone throwing a grenade into the second floor window. Um, I don't have an answer to that. The old 1.7 Suburbia had much smaller windows with things in the window to kind of block grenades a little bit, so it wasn't that common from what I saw personally. So, but these new teams are getting really good at throwing utility. And no kidding. And just to answer your question a little bit, Hecklack, there's no real, like, ironclad defense against that. If somebody has a really well-placed grenade and you're in that closed space, somebody's probably going down. But the only way you can preemptively defend against that is to make sure you don't have a ton of people stacked in the same spots. So you can have two, three people in there, but just make sure they're not right next to each other so a frag doesn't take both of them out. But, yeah, I mean... If they're too close, or the grenade is thrown just perfectly, there's really not much you can do about that, which is one of the downsides of defending in the middle house. And Master Stunta That's already in. in. Up the stairwell, he is not wasting time. Oh my he goodness, did. Master Stunta. Did we see a cap? I would, I would be stunned to see this. And he finishes off the kill, Master Stunta in the middle house on objective. He is waiting though, I'm not sure what he's waiting for. He has every opportunity right now. Ranger and Burtok are not... I don't think they know. Yeah, I don't think they know either. It doesn't seem like they're adjusting. Master Stunta sitting at the top of the staircase. Okay, it looks like he's checking the code now. He might have just been so stunned about the fact that he got there that fast. Oh, and he is in perfect spot to cap. They will not be able to see him. Ranger did just realize, so he's rushing in. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah. Oh. He the cap. Wow. Yeah, that hesitation really cost him there. Ranger just got taken out in center house by Lord Dabaline. And now it's down to a two and a half versus two, or excuse me, one and a half versus two. Ranger trying to give call outs as he's down. I don't know if he knows about that bug or maybe, Maybe they do not have it right now. I don't know. I've heard kind of mixed reports about that. Rangers trying to tell Burtok to get over to center house. Yeah, that is too bad. They had that opportunity to cap. He just took a little too long. I mean, if he had another 10 seconds, he would have had that for sure. And Lord Davalina dropping a grenade on lane 4. I think he suspects there's somebody right there. Burtok is pushing into center house to try to get that revive. He's not careful here. He could get picked up. Oh, laser, laser on him right now. Yeah, it looks like he spotted him. And revive comes out. And Dabalina has already used his frag, so that's not going to happen. Dabalina with an interesting choice of weapon here. Sniper rifle with a two times. He is going to have a real uphill battle here. Ranger at the top of the staircase. I mean, 
likely scenario is unless Abilena gets lucky, it will most likely be a trade. Looks like Burtok's gonna drop a flash or a grenade. Nope, out the window. Yeah, it looks like they aren't quite aware of where Dabalina is right now. But he is about to get shot down upon if he continues on his current path. And Burtok should see him momentarily. has his tablet out. Oh, and I am... And his body decides to break dance across the floor. Man, that was... That, that round very easily could have gone the other way for a cap on West Coast Riders' side. Um, not sure exactly what happened. Again, I think maybe he was a little shocked that he just got in there that fast and got those kills. Wasn't really anticipating that... That kind of success, I'm not sure. But, uh, sorry, go ahead. I think he was also expecting a third person to be in the house, so he was kind of just waiting for them to move. Certainly possible. Yeah, but, you know, you have that kind of opportunity. If you think there's somebody in there, rush around the corner, see if you can get a pick. Or, excuse me, just pick up the person who's in that room. Sometimes people do hang out in there, especially if they're watching lane one from that window. So it makes sense to be a little cautious, but he was just kind of sitting in that corner. And, uh, you know, if he had taken even just a little less time doing that, the cap likely would have come out because he was in the middle of it. I don't know how close he was, but I imagine he was pretty close when he got shot. All right, looks like we now have the red car objective. Uh, drop that camera if you don't mind. For some reason, I'm having difficulty doing that right now. So uh, just control and then the number. There we okay, go. I dropped the camera. Nice. Thank you. Okay, so fairly common defensive setup. Uh, I would argue it's common because it's pretty effective. So, Soldier watching lane 4. Burtok starting to push out towards the school bus now. And he just called him out. And that grenade landed square in the door of the school bus. An interesting throw. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. 4D Printing is pushing down lane one. Yeah, I think Soldier is about to catch Burtok here on lane four. Looks like his laser is going below the car. I don't know if he can see his feet or not. Burtok should be... Yep, there it is. Soldier takes out Burtok lane four on the white car. Skype saw that, though. Looks like he's trying to go for the refrag. Soldier throws a flash, and it looks like he might have tagged him. Nice job. Soldier on the double kill there. Oh, Operation... Printing. Sorry, go ahead. He's throwing smoke to get across the street. Um, that may alert one shot to his location. You know, it looks like it has. A very strong west side push here. One shot is about to pick up 4D, though, I imagine. Yep, there it is. And Ranger gets the immediate refrag. And Lord Dabalina gets the refrag on the refrag. Now Ramen gets the refrag on the refrag on the refrag. Just <laughs> refrags all the way down tonight. So Ramen is the last one up, though. Right, and Soldier picks up Ramen. Very strong defensive round there. 
So what are your thoughts on the defense on that round? Um, I liked it. Um, I, it was a very solid defense. They all stayed in their spots. They weren't getting too peaky. No, it was solid. Yeah, I'm I not think... Sure how, sorry, go ahead. I'm not sure what you thought. Yeah, I think we're seeing this more and more is uh, there are just some dominant patterns on this particular map. And a lot of the time it involves having somebody on the porch here. And I'm just going to scroll over to lane four here. And then a person on the porch here. You can be somewhat shielded from grenades. I mean, you might still get flash, but especially having this overhang on lane four means if somebody drops a frag right on top of you, you're not going to die from it. So it's a strong position, and you have to cross an open line somewhere. So if you're on this porch on lane four, you're going to have to come out either over here on lane three or over here on lane two, or really the most powerful position to get killed on is from lane four. But either way, you have to go out in the open, and they have a covered position, and same on the lane one spot. And then you have this place where Soldier was hanging out, where again, highly fortified and a very strong angle on lane four. Early on, he called out, uh, I think it was Burtok, crossing over to the school bus. And even if that's all you do, just having that visibility is incredibly powerful. So it's cool to see these rookies picking up on those patterns so quickly. All right, and let's see what Operation 1 does on defense here. Yeah, they're talking about porches. The one nice thing about those porches is you can also hear anyone coming up those lanes, so you can call out to your teammate for them to get the kills. That is an excellent point. Yeah, as somebody that plays the porches a lot of the time, that is really your primary job, so... Excellent bringing that up. Uh, even if you don't get the kill, you can sit there and just listen. Like right now, Stoney is in playground. Skype should hear him shortly just because he's on that porch. Some shots come out. Who is that from? It looks like Soldier from Playground. Burtok looking underneath Red Car on lane four. That is a gnarly position he's got. I like to see this. They're all throwing smokes at once and grenades. Well, this is a good smoke grenade. He actually blinded Burtok. Burtok cannot see. Ranger gets Lord Dabalina. Uh, I'm not seeing where that happened exactly on the map. Oh, it looks like lane three. He got shot in that little gap. Now, 4D out in the open here, but... He catches one-shot kills anyway. Burtok gets soldiers in lane four. So it's all up to Stony here on lane four. He downs Burtok from the white car. But it looks like Skype is training his laser on the white car, and a grenade almost catches him. Wow. That was a nice throw. I think the grenade physics just didn't work out that time. And a trade there between Stony and 4D Printing to finish it out. Operation 1 goes up 3-1. Yep, and we are seeing the power of that defense once again. Oh, man. You know, it's cool, too. I've noticed a lot of these rookies are getting good at prone positions, like Burtok had on lane 4. Um, yep. I, um, I know when we first started, we were not able to play these. We would always get picked out. But since the update, they seem to be a little bit better. I'm not sure how. But these teams seem to be playing them very well. Yeah, I mean, you're playing against a lot of these rookie teams. So from your perspective, you know, what do you think is making the difference here? What do you think is making them get so good so fast? I think just the amount of time and effort they're committing to to playing like while a lot of teams were taking time off from this update these teams were playing once or even twice a day i think this is operation one second match of the day yeah that's that's pretty crazy um 
I got a request to cast the earlier one. I couldn't make it. And then they asked me again later in the day. That was my thought. I was like, wow, these guys are really putting in the time. Uh, I have never personally done two scrims in one day, and I've been playing for a while now. So they're more hardcore than me in some way, I guess. <laughs> I think the closest I've came is playing one extra map for another team, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I've done that as well. Um, but yeah, two full-size scrims in one day, only a couple hours apart. That's, that's pretty wild. You don't see that. But Dabalina has a pretty nice little prone position like we were talking about before. These guys like these types of spots. I don't know if he can see Ranger in lane one, though. I don't think so. Stony takes some shots from his spot in the front yard. Does not make contact. Soldier Z on the porch of Burning. Again, another spot where you've got a strong line in one direction and you've got audio cues you can pick up on and a grenade lands right on top of Stony. Does not kill him. One shot kills gets Ranger. What? And Ramen One in the middle house. Did. Sorry, go ahead. One thing I did notice about this defense is they really don't have anyone in front of the uplink. So pandas have gotten caught out a few times by just getting capped on without even realizing because of that. Yeah, they've got Soldier over here, and we got a couple of kills going out. But Soldier, if he goes down, that's uh, pretty much open for a cap if they come from middle house, which looks like they're trying to do. Because you can cap from the side. Uh, Soldier gets Burtok there from his porch position. I don't know if Skype heard that or not. But once you get to this side, what is this? The, uh, the, the north side of the tank, you can cap, and people in this spawn house will not be able to stop you. Short of throwing an excellent grenade or something. Oh, Soldier about to get Skype from the porch. Dab <clears throat> Dabalina gets ramen. It's all up to 40 printing, and he is spider crabbing out the front door. Oh boy, soldier up on the slide. He might see him here. Yeah, I'd be surprised if soldier does not spot 40. There it is. Okay, game getting closer here. 3 2. Operation 1 still in the lead, but. Uh, I mean, West Coast Riders, if they get in here and get a cap, they could uh, potentially tie this series up. So, thoughts on the offensive push that time? Um, even though it didn't work, I did like it. They uh, spread out along multiple lanes. Um, I just think they need to check their corners a little more and then probably grenade some of the more common spots and just maybe a little more pre-fire. Agreed. Just... I'm sorry, did not mean to interrupt you there. Did you have uh, another thought there? Nope, that was it. Yeah, they had a pretty good push. They put some smokes around the objective. Uh, I think they just didn't account for Soldier on the porch, which is a bit of a common spot here. It's powerful, but it's common. They had a couple people kind of creeping around him. If they had just pushed on lane 4 or through the playground and had people close enough for a refrag, they might have taken that out. And then the north side of the tank would have been open. But if you don't take care of that line, Soldier got those kills and then he just got up on top of the slide and finished up. So, if you're going to push on lane 4, make sure you're checking that spot on this objective. There's really no way around it. And almost every team plays it. Yeah, seriously. Every team. <laughs> uh, so Brace Sony is using a shield. Oh, okay. This is the first time, I think, in this match we've seen a shield. So Bracer29 asked, are SKSs valid on Suburbia as compared to something like an AK-12? I would personally argue no. Uh, Dazzler had some good input in there. I would run with what he said. Just, you could potentially play with it, but it's just going to make your life miserable and a lot harder than it needs to be. 
you're better off with full auto. And please, for the love of God, do not use a P90. <laughs> uh, Massa Stunta gets ramen. Let's see. And that was in Middle House, it looks like. Wow. Okay. So once again, we have somebody on the porch. This time it's Skype43, who I believe died to the person here last time. Stony is giving call outs with his shield. Let's see. Get Stony's perspective here. Camera two. All right, that's good perspective. Yeah, Soldier and Stony both moving up on Burtok. Looks like Stony's just firing to add distraction. Maybe flush him out so Soldier can pick him off as he runs. Flashbang goes out. I don't know if that caught him. That might have been a little short. I'm assuming it was because he's still firing. So one shot kills has taken center house with Massistanta. Okay, 40 takes out Massa Stunta. West Coast Riders down to 4. 4v4 altogether. Burtok spending a, a 40 takes out one shot kills now. So 3v4. And Soldiers gets Burtok as he is distracted by Stony. Skype runs out in the open here. Dangerous grenade move. On 4D spot. Oh, and nice grenade by Lord Dabalina. Good call out there. The res is still available. That's a dangerous res, though. And Dabalina looks like he's getting an angle on Ranger. Yep, and nice kill there. And he looks like he's trying to get the confirm there on Burtok, who is already dead. All up to Skype now. Lord Dabalina could potentially rush to the opposite side of the tank and cap. Or actually, he could just run to the front of the tank right now. He could just run straight to the front of the tank and cap, but no, instead they get the kill. So, nice job tying it up. 3-3. Three, three. So, I was pretty distracted by the shield play over here on lane 4. What were you seeing on your side of the map? So, it looked like Heklak, or sorry, Mastanta and one-shot kills took a center house. It just doesn't look like they were quite aggressive enough, and it didn't look like it matched... It looked like they did it maybe a little too soon. Um, they didn't have the support from the sides. That would have been crucial. Um, th that's something that's hard to do, but you almost have to grenade 4D, where 4D was playing on the left side of spawn house just before anyone gets up in center. Couldn't agree more. Uh, I mean, for those front yard positions, they're so gnarly, especially they can see I'm uh, I'm on where 4D was right now, and you can see there's a not a perfect angle on lane four, but at the very least you can get callouts on anybody crossing over there, and you can get shots and maybe even rotate into this center position and have a better angle. So you need to take that person out, and they do have a very strong angle on the objective itself in that case. So pre-fragging those is a great idea. Pre-fragging the whole front yard is generally a good idea. And it paid off for him because 4D got a grenade dropped right on his head. Apollo is just mentioning that the PKM is not a good gun and that the P90 is way better. <sighs> well, looks like V3 is never getting casted again. Sorry, guys. If you ever want to get Theta angry at you, say the PKM is bad and then suggest the P90. How dare you, Reinhardt? Play in their game. Play in their <laughs> game. Alright, 40 printing on lane 1, Ramen in the middle house, Ranger pushing up. It looks like just a very... Oh, and Soldier gets Burtok. Where is that? I'm not sure if I got him, but it's going to be hard to get out of this lane spot Lane one? Or lane four? Yeah, it seems like Soldier and Burtok keep meeting on lane four. It's the battle of lane four between these two. The battle of the school bus, so to speak. 
And there's a very even spread here. It looks like they have one person in roughly each lane now. Or Marsock. Ooh, Ranger with a nice peek and kill right there. He did not have the dominant angle, and he still got that kill, so nice job there. I declare to try and move up. Just smoke it out first and try and move so up. So 4v4. West Coast Riders can take this. They will tie it up match-wise. Lord Dabalina boosting their odds just a little bit by getting Ranger there. Ramen sneaking up in a similar position. Soldier takes out Skype. Now 2v4. It looks like West Coast Riders is putting themselves in position for a tiebreaker here. Stoney gets Ramen, and now it's all up to 4D on lane one. Ramen is not dead, so potential for res there, but that would be quite dangerous right now. And yeah, there's three people walking down that lane. Yeah, this is... And there's the finishing shots there, all up to 4D. I saw him cap prone the other day. We'll see if he tries something ballsy like that. And he goes prone underneath the Jeep, or the Humvee, I should say. I don't think they know where 4D printing is right now. Yeah, that's fine because they they don't really have to seek him out right now. He's going to have to take out likely Dabalina and Mastastunta in order to get away with this. Yeah, so shots ring out. They should be checking their tablets now. And a smoke, that was a bit of a dangerous move. They now know exactly where he is. And he's spider crabbing out in the open. Oh, oh my goodness. Is he really going to wow. do this? He might just get away with this. Forty is very fast. Nobody is rotating. Wow. Whoa. What a cap. I, I'm i just speechless about that one. Um, yeah, I mean, that was just ballsy. I just thought especially throwing that smoke would have given him away and they would have rotated, but I guess it just gave him enough time to blind them and run in and cap. So nice play by 40 printing there. Save the day against, how many was it? It was three B1, I think? Three. Yeah, that's... Good job, man. These rookies are scary good. <clears throat> and that cap was, I feel like, under two seconds right there. Yeah, I've seen him do some light speed caps. 4D, definitely the capping specialist for Operation 1 at this point. And my favorite map is up next. Or something like that. I can't do anything. All right, uh, so we are on cargo now, which is a little bit more of a wild card map. Similar to Q1, I feel like it's a bit of an equalizer just because it can often come down to reaction time and just pure aggression. Yes. Um, it's going to be interesting what these two teams do. I know in the past, West Coast Riders have struggled a little bit with this map, but it seems like every time we see these newer teams play, they're ten times better than last time, so. <laughs> it's so true. Oh, man. I mean, I've been playing for a while now, and I feel like they're going to be lapping me next week if they keep going this fast. Oof, man. Every time they spawn in, it was just jarring. All right, so... Let's see what the plan is here. Now, Lord Dabalina bringing the SIG 552. Not sure how I feel about that. Some free fire coming out from West Coast Riders. Oof, and 40 printing already getting kills up the middle here. 
That seems to be Forty's job a lot of the time on these defenses on cargo, as he gets up and harasses people in the middle. And Master Stunted takes out Ramen. So now to 4v4. Sorry, I put the team's names wrong incorrectly. You're fired. No, but it's fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the, it's good now, right? Yes, it, it is fixed. Okay, cool. Oh, 40 throws a smoke back. It's always a good tag. Wow, he threw it all the way off the map, which is pretty much ideal. Skype gets one shot kills in the center. Master Stunta watching carefully along this line. 40 printing might get caught out, but nope. Master Stunta still floating around there. Master Stunt on 40 printing, about to have a confrontation here. 40 catches him on the corner. 40 talking a little trash there. Let's try and keep it clean, guys. Uh, Soldiers is the last one up on Marsoc. I think he just realized he's the last one up. out. Flash. I don't know if he got anybody there, but Forty saw him running. Uh, let's see. So that was three for Forty printing in that round. And that was a great example of how fast things can shift in cargo. You know, one moment you think you've got a full squad and then all of a sudden half your team is gone. More than half your team. So I was watching more towards the center. What were you uh, keeping an eye on that round? I probably missed it. Um, I was just kind of floating around also on defense, um, just trying to look at the spots they were holding. Um, it looked like they had a solid defense, um, especially with 4D. But it, and not that oper or not that West Coast Riders did anything that wasn't traditional or pro correct. It just doesn't look like it paid off for them that time, from what I saw. Yep, sometimes you throw the dice and they don't go your way. It's a, it's a hard lesson. I mean, it's uh, similar to poker. You could play play the cards correctly, but still lose. It can happen on Downfall or Cargo, any map on Onward as well, where you have a sound strategy and just for a variety of reasons it falls apart on that particular round. Let's see if anybody's going to try for an early cross here. I know you have, you personally have caught me making this cross before in scrims we've had. I don't appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, pre-fire coming out. Stoney doing the right thing and taking his time, but Master Stunto just sprinted right across and made it. Which is good. I mean, if you can get over there early, it's a strong defensive position. Just a bit of a risk to take. I like how Bertok did call out the number of people that got across. That's always helpful. Yes. It's excellent communication if he did that. So, Soldier gets somebody, but immediately gets refragged by Ramen. Ramen getting real close to objective now. Gets Lord Dabalina as he's proned. And Ramen gets team killed by Bertok there. Stoney was about to run into him anyway, but... Yeah, Bertok did uh, West Coast Riders a favor there. So, 40 printing in Bertok versus Master Stunta and Stony. Sorry, were you about to say something there? Just that Bertok is checking that uh, alley on the east side, and he just picked up Master Stunta. But that part's very, that spot's very hard to see, especially if it volks in. On the in right, there. over here by me. The right, I'm towards my void. By the way. Oh, revive me. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. Yeah, I think that call for a revive ended up drawing Bertok's attention, and he peeked right as he was going over there. Um, I know it's tempting to say revive me, and I'm certainly guilty of doing it occasionally myself in certain situations, but really try not to do that, especially if there's enemies nearby. It's your teammate's responsibility more than anything to check their tablet and see it. Maybe jam your jam your mics or something, but 
If you say, hey, come revive me in a really loud voice, in many cases that will just alert the enemy that A, there's a body to be confirmed, and B, there's probably going to be somebody coming over to revive, and that means two potential kills. Uh, but yeah, to your point, though, that, that dark alley... My goodness, is it dark. And that was not how it used to be, too. That's just a really funky spot now. Yeah, I was watching some old footage from... Okay. Um, for Before my match of uh, some cargo poison. It's amazing, the difference. Yeah, I mean, it's night and day, truly. You used to be able to see everything back there, and now it's just the realm of shadows. I don't know why they did that. <clears throat> Pre-fire coming out, and Ramen catches Lord Davalina with that pre-fire. Does not finish him, though. Not sure anybody is aware of what's going on. This is a potential revive situation for sure. Yeah, Soldier's going to go back and get that pickup. So yes. Mass is done to is pushed off to the side. I like how he's doing this. It's a good way to get behind the enemy doing this. And he picked up two doing that. And may pick up Burtok. Is in that little dark alley we were just discussing. So West Coast Riders have all five up, but a lot of them are very far back, and as they say that, they just take out another. It looked like a, an instantaneous one-shot trade on either side. I only heard two shots, and then I saw the trade come up on the kill feed. Skype 43 picks up Lord Dabalina. Looks like that is more towards the west side of the map. And one shot kills is in position to potentially cap. Soldiers covering him. Ooh, Massistunta downs himself. He does have the tablet out. Ooh, one shot kills going for the cap right now. Where is this last defender? Burtok is way too far away right now. No eyes on. One shot kills in position for sure. Distracted by soldiers. I don't know if soldiers knows what's going on, but if he does, he's doing a good job of drawing attention. There we go. West Coast Riders gets the cap right underneath Burtok's nose there. Nice job by West Coast Riders to come back with a two, two points on the objective. So I noticed Bracer29 said he was playing with uh, West Coast Riders earlier, pre-scrim, and they said that Suburbia and Cargo were their least favorite maps. Hmm. So I like to see them practicing them in scrims, because that's what it's for. Yeah, that's an excellent point. If you feel like you're not very good at a map, that's really what you should be playing in scrims. You don't want to play it in a match and feel like, oh, we're completely inadequate here. It's better to play it in a scrim and work the kinks out when it doesn't matter, so... Yeah, like you were saying, kudos to them for playing these maps. And not only is this not their favorite map, but they got a cap on it, so... Yeah, hopefully it's a sign of improvement. Maybe they're getting a little more comfortable with their attacks now. I know that uplink is probably the most capable uplink on cargo. So it's good to see them exploit that. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's capable, but it's still not easy, so, you know, credit to them on that. Uh, but yeah, to your point, what the standard algorithm has always been for capping this is just dump smokes on the objective and then push hard on one side, like send three, maybe even four people to one side and then have one person covering the flank. And, you know, even very high-level teams have gotten away with that. Uh, Animal House comes to mind, and... You know, a few other teams. Fury is pretty good at that one. You know, some some pretty decent teams know how to do that very well. So if you guys are interested in seeing good technique for capping on that, I suggest watching film of those teams. Looks like and, Operation Warner using that strat. Yep. And Soldier gets Burtox. Skype takes out... Oh, I, I don't know what happened there. I think maybe it was an accidental confirm. 
Uh, Ramen pushing in. Soldier Z might hear him, but Skype right in front of him as well. He is surrounded. So in addition to the sound or the visual effects of the smoke, it also provides sound cover. Oh no. Oh wow. Oh, Soldier just barely missed the angle on 4D and instead took out Skype. And then 4D turned that into a cap. Oh, that was just unfortunate. Uh, just slightly off on the angle there. So Dazzler commented, smoke, throw bodies at objective, <laughs> and then profit. Yeah. Which is what we saw right there. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that is the algorithm for sure. And I'm seeing, it looks like somebody already left, so I would assume that we're not getting an encore. Just double check. And it looks like people are leaving from both. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's over. Okay, well, uh, I don't know, any final thoughts about this map or the match in general? Um, even though Operation 1, I think they took all three maps, it was, there's signs where it could have gone either way throughout the whole match. Um, I think both teams have stuff to take positives to take away from this and then stuff they can work on so Couldn't agree more especially suburbia. I mean they took it to 3-3 and just a minor lapse in rotation technique at the very end cost them that But strong showing by West Coast riders. They really have nothing to feel ashamed about here so plenty of quality footage to watch and hopefully they can learn something from that and take it into their next match in the tournament. Okay, well, if that's it, I think I'm going to call it. I am starving right now, so I'm going to go eat some food. Hopefully you all can do the same. So for tonight, I'm going to say that's it for me, Theta, and my co-caster, Reinhardt. So, Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, and we want to have you on more often. So this will not be the last you will hear of Reinhardt that much, I promise you guys. And for now, that's going to be it. So have a good night, everybody.